biologics came with some of these recoveries. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to. According to a former high-level member of the American intelligence establishment, the United States government has been secretly recovering debris and even fully intact spacecraft of non-human origin for decades. It's like something out of the UFO subreddits and Twitter groups, full of contradictory claims and discredited witnesses, or the script for another X-Files reunion run. However, things are different this time. This time around, the whistleblower is backed with a black triangular fighter jet with secret alien technology, other high-ranking officers who can attest for him, and a name. Do scientists have alien technology reverse-engineered? What is the fabled UFO with the black triangle? Let's dive into the U.S. Navy's revealed mysterious fighter jets that contain alien technology and what we can expect to come next. David Grush was a U.S. military veteran. The Air Force, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and the National Reconnaissance Office are all names for the same organization. Grush worked for the NRO as a Senior Intelligence Capabilities Integration Officer at the GS-15 level, which is roughly similar to a colonel in the military. Grush claimed to be the agency's Senior Technical Advisor for Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Analysis, Transmedium Issues, as well as its representative on the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, which was charged with looking into sightings of what were formerly known as UFOs, but are now referred to as Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Then, Grush returned to the NGA while continuing to work with UAPs in some capacity, first as the co-lead for UAP analysis and later as the agency's representative on the same task force. Grush claims that for decades, the United States military has been covering up the fact that it has been retrieving debris and even entire vessels of non-human origin. That, he says, has been accomplished by multiple agencies nesting UAP activities in conventional secret access programs without appropriate reporting to various oversight authorities. Grush adds that these attempts are so hidden that they've even been concealed from the unidentified aerial phenomena task force assigned to examine such encounters. Even stranger, he claims that the United States isn't the only one trying to retrieve and use these unusual technologies and that a covert arms race has been going on for decades. A deep dive into the conspiracy theory that the United States operates a secret fleet of massive black triangle-shaped aircraft, commonly referred to as the TR-3B, appears warranted at this time. For decades, the United States and other countries are said to have secretly flown a gigantic black triangular aircraft known as the TR-3B, also known as the Black Manta or Astra. The United States is no stranger to the concept of covert black triangle aircraft, but the TR-3B's lore involves far more than just cutting-edge, low-observable designs and radar-absorbent coatings. There is talk that the top-secret special access program isn't a stealth plane at all. Instead, it is claimed to be an airplane driven by an anti-gravity drive, which was developed using reverse-engineered alien technology. Certainly, that seems outlandish at first. Actually, in just the past calendar year, the U.S., if the Air Force already had a stockpile of anti-gravity drives collecting dust in the hangars of Area 51, spending billions on far less capable jet engines would be an awfully expensive way to avoid suspicion. The Air Force awarded nearly $5 billion in contracts to continue developing next-generation adaptive cycle turbofan engines to power new stealth fighters in development. But, and we all know there's always a but, the TR-3B's purported talents might not be as far-fetched as they first appear. There are several programs, patents, technological advancements, and statements made by insiders that suggest something weird is happening within America's most covert special access programs, and this is the truth. 
Unidentified black triangles have been seen flying over populous regions in the United States and other countries for decades. The National Institute for Discovery Science, created by hotel magnate and multimillionaire Robert Bigelow, was one of the first institutions to do extensive research into these stories using private funding. Bigelow has been accused over the years of using the public's fascination with UFOs to secure lucrative government contracts, of being a government disinformation agent, and other charges, which cast doubt on his credibility and his frequent involvement in both official and unofficial investigations into UAP. A lot of reputable news outlets reported on and discussed the results of the National Institute for Discovery Science during its existence from 1995 to 2004, hence the Institute should be considered a respectable investigative entity. Furthermore, National Institute for Discovery Science reports are some of the few viable resources for investigating the topic, because few other organizations investigated it with the same thoroughness. On January 5, 2000, a police officer reportedly called the National Institute for Discovery Science to report a very large, silent, brightly lit object in western Illinois. The subsequent investigation reportedly located five other police officers from different precincts and more than a dozen other witnesses to corroborate the claim. The strange triangular object, according to eyewitness accounts, was spotted heading in the general direction of Scott Air Force Base in St. Clair County, Illinois. Due to the peculiar nature of having dozens of huge aircraft flying in formations throughout the United States, UFO sightings and reports frequently accompany Air Force cargo aircraft engaging in joint forcible entry exercises. It's worth mentioning that the National Institute for Discovery Science also detailed a tentative correlation between reported sightings of these black triangles and the locations of Air Mobility Command sites. However, according to the Air Force, there were no such exercises that night, and no flights that might account for the alleged sightings, as reported by the National Institute for Discovery Science investigators. There have been reports of Black Triangle UFOs since at least the 1950s, and numerous groups looked into a spate of sightings over Belgium and the UK in the 1980s and 1990s, at least twice over Belgium, F-16s were sent out to intercept strange radar readings. But it wasn't until the late 90s that black triangles became a familiar sight over American skies. When the National Institute for Discovery Science established their reporting hotline in 1999, they received hundreds of complaints regarding black triangles, all of which described similarly massive, silent, and frequently slowly moving aircraft. In order to estimate the real frequency of black triangle sightings in the United States, the National Institute for Discovery Science approached the Mutual UFO Network and Larry Hatch, who maintained one of the largest and most extensive databases of UFO sightings at the time. Since the NIDS hotline wasn't made readily available for collecting reports until 1999, these groups were especially helpful in expanding the sample size of the study. The National Incident Data System compiled over 700 black triangle reports from throughout the country onto a single map of American roads. Air Force bases are represented by blue, yellow, and green spheres on the map. The National Institute for Discovery Science report states that there was an upsurge in reports of black triangle UFOs in all three databases beginning in 1997. In addition, the bulk of reports occurred over densely populated areas, which is an odd route for a government aircraft operation designed to remain covert. National Institute for Discovery Science notes that these sightings have been reported all over the country, in contrast to the testing regimens of the F-117 Nighthawk and B-2 Spirit, when they were primarily reported in Nevada and Southern California over less populous regions. After receiving numerous reports of black triangles over urban areas and near heavily traveled interstates, the National Institute for Discovery Science began to openly question whether or not these objects originated on Earth. 
It appears clearly that people were seeing something in the skies around this time. Regardless of whether you believe in the TR-3B or Black Triangle UFOs or not, the United States has placed a major emphasis on aviation technology since the early inception of manned flight. With the U.S. in 1908, the U.S. Army placed an order with the Wright brothers for the first military airplane ever built. Taking and holding air superiority over any given battlefield is now a central tenet of modern American military doctrine. Of course, it has always taken a lot of money and a lot of secrecy to keep that capability up in the face of increasingly capable overseas adversaries. Many classified aircraft projects have been made public and continue to look bizarre. Even more exotic secret aircraft were reportedly patrolling the skies over the southwestern United States for years before the government admitted their existence, joining the ranks of highly classified stealth aircraft like the F-117. As just one example, Boeing's YF-118 Bird of Prey began development in 1992 at the U.S. military's top-secret Groom Lake facility, commonly known as Area 51, and flew 40 covert test missions over Nevada between 1996 and 1999. Since Boeing paid for the full $67 million project themselves, the public didn't find out about the incredibly alien-looking Bird of Prey until 2002. Reports abound that other, more secretive government-funded technology demonstrators will never see similar revelation. Some have even been said to have been buried in the sands of Area 51. Although tales of other purportedly secret aircraft, such as the TR-3B and the hypersonic surveillance platform they named Aurora, were being compiled by plane spotters and UFO addicts, the bird of prey was still in the air and actively operating. Despite steady cuts in defense spending after the fall of the Soviet Union, it is important to remember that the United States, nonetheless, devoted a higher share of its GDP to defense until the late 1990s. In reality, when adjusted for inflation, America's 1992 defense budget of $325.03 billion translates to more than $718 billion now meaning they undoubtedly had the money to support a number of secret initiatives. More so, in 1991, it was said that the United States had the largest military budget. More than $60.3 billion, or the equivalent of roughly $137 billion in today's market, had been spent on classified research, development, and procurement by the Air Force over the previous five years, which would be enough to buy more than 1,500 F-35As. It appeared that the United States Black Triangle was exposed to the world in 1991. Northrop, the company that also designed the B-2 Spirit's distinctive black and triangular shape, began work on the stealthy aircraft in 1976, contemporaneous with Lockheed's Have Blue program, which would yield the F-117. Known as the Tactical High Altitude Penetrator, or THAP, Northrop's stealthy triangle plane was designed to attack from high above. Near the end of 1978, Northrop received a fixed-price RMD and demonstration contract from the Air Force to develop and fabricate a prototype high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft based on their THAP concept. In 1981, the prototype took to the skies for the first time outside of Area 51, and by 1982, the contract for mass manufacture had been signed. Popular stories made the TR-3B seem considerably larger than the actual Northrop TR-3A, which was only around 42 feet in length, 14 feet in height, and had a wingspan of 60 to 65 feet. A skilled airport observer by the name of Chris Gibson reported seeing a display of Aurora over the North Sea in 1989, and this seems to fit nicely with that claim. Some other boomerang-shaped platforms, completely silent and boasting a massive wingspan of 600 to 800 feet, or three to four times the size of the B-52 Stratofortress, were also mentioned in popular mechanics coverage alongside the Northrop TR-3A. Popular mechanics also reported on the TR-3A being substantially quieter than other aircraft, but not silent as is typically asserted about the TR-3B. 
When considering the long-standing claims of the TR-3B, the story takes a decidedly more outlandish turn. The TR-3A myth was somewhat grounded, describing a stealthy reconnaissance vehicle built to operate alongside the F-117. The TR-3B, in contrast to the turbojet-powered TR-3A, has an anti-gravity motor that was purportedly reverse-engineered from a crashed alien spaceship. The TR-3B bridges the gap between rumors of UAP and tales of actual aircraft capable of incredible feats of flight. Claims abound online concerning the TR-3B's anti-gravity drive, with the most common being the use of nuclear power to spin highly compressed mercury, which in turn creates plasma and a gravitational field. Most accounts of the TR-3B's creation center on Operation Paperclip, the post-war American initiative that absorbed 2,500 German scientists and engineers so that they could continue developing weapon systems. Despite how absurd these statements sound, there is really substantial evidence to verify portions of them. For instance, the amount of energy needed to run an anti-gravity drive like the one believers say powers the TR-3B is far greater than what our existing aviation engineers are capable of producing. But, then, Lockheed Martin does have a patent for containerized cold fusion reactors they say could be small enough to fit inside the fuselage of an F-16. Claims made regarding the TR-3B, which are made in a series of patents filed by the U.S. Navy in 2020, sound like something out of a science fiction novel. There is a common thread, or rather, a person, running through patents covering anything from gravitational wave generators to weapons that alter the fabric of space and time. Dr. Salvatore Cesar Pais. So, there are indeed patents out there that seem to suggest the United States has been reverse engineering UFO technology. Meanwhile, when it comes to the U.S. Air Force's sixth generation fighter jet, what can we expect? A contract for the next generation air dominance platform is expected to be awarded by the United States Air Force in 2024. The abbreviated acronym NGAD is a mishmash of Pentagon concepts that disguises the true goal, a cutting-edge sixth-generation fighter jet. Due to the secret nature of the NGAD industry proposal, it is currently impossible to determine specific requirements from the Air Force. But for decades now, jet fighters have been categorized into generations. What, then, are the characteristics of a sixth-generation fighter? The concept of a fighter plane dates back to World War I, and ever since then, observers have classified fighters into generations, or versions developed around the same period and using similar technologies. Fighter evolution in conflict unfolded swiftly as the first exchanges of pistol fire between the pilots of scout planes gave place to aircraft meant for combat with dedicated machine guns firing first around and later even through propellers. More advanced enemy planes prompted the development of superior countermeasures. When enough of these upgrades had been implemented into new aircraft models, those planes might be categorized into distinct generations based on shared sets of improvements. From the first fixed-wing and biplane fighters of the First World War, to the piston-powered patrollers of the Second World War and beyond into the jet age, this has always been the case. For the opening ceremonies of an Air Force gunnery competition in October 1954, popular science included a formation flight by four generations of fighter aircraft. The SPAD biplane from World War I and the F-51 fighter from World War II are joined by two distinct jet fighters the F-86 Sabre from the Korean War and the F-100 Super Sabre from the Vietnam War in this generational snapshot of aircraft. As new technologies are integrated into the design of fighter planes, they become a distinguishing factor between generations. Fighter jets have come a long way since the first straight-wing aircraft to break the sound barrier and equip themselves with guns, unguided rockets, and bombs. Today, we have stealth jets that are sensor-rich and can carry a wide variety of anti-air, 
and anti-ground missiles. In 2009, researchers speculated on the technologies that a sixth-generation fighter would use while also describing the previous generations of fighters. Even more stealthy, efficient, networked with other vehicles, equipped with superior sensors, may be able to change its shape in mid-flight using laser weapons, and even optionally crude were all things we predicted for the next generation of fighters after the F-22 when we talked about them over a decade ago. All of these shifts are reactions to the evolving nature of the threats faced by prior generations of combatants. Planes can be made stealthier to protect against cutting-edge anti-aircraft weapons. Fighters can see further and better than enemy planes and air defense radars because of improved sensors. When designing a fighter plane, it's important to take into account both current dangers and those that may arise in the future. The Air Force didn't refer to the next generation air dominance as a fighter in its announcement of the procurement, but rather as a platform. It is plausible to believe it will execute fighter-like duties and have a fighter-like shape. After all, it's supposed to take the place of the F-22 another fighter designed to achieve air superiority by defeating enemy aircraft in combat. The Air Force, however, is thinking of the vehicle in a broader function than merely an airplane that fights aircraft, as seen by the use of the term platform, rather than looking back to the last century of air-to-air -air warfare. Like how the Air Force might use the wings of fighters now, the NGAD will be one of numerous types of aircraft the service plans to use in the future. One of the greatest dangers to fighters in the present is that they are expensive and difficult to replace. This threat can be mitigated by incorporating other aircraft, notably more expendable autonomous aircraft, into the operations of a fighter wing. The next generation air dominance platform, also known as the sixth generation fighter, will be distinguished by its ability to do the job traditionally associated with fighter jets and to counter new threats that have arisen since the previous generation of fighter jets. Who knows, it might come with alien technology installed in it. What do you think? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.